Hey, what's up? Welcome to the Technesthetic Podcast. I'm your host, Eric, and this is Randy. And uh, we got another week for you today. We got some good topics. Actually, uh, today was the Galaxy Unpacked event. Uh, there's a lot of things to unpack about it. Haha. <laughs> and <Funny>. then... <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe him, dude? Yeah. And then we also have... That's a dad joke for you. That's what happens when you're a dad. Did you write that one down? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, and then uh, we also have uh, a little bit of uh, fire. Uh, you know, uh, Apple's under fire for some privacy related things. I know we have a lot to talk about with that as well. So uh, let's go ahead and roll right into Galaxy Unpacked. So this one kind of snuck up on me because uh, I didn't really yeah. see it coming. Yeah. I wasn't like, I don't really Honestly, follow. Dude, it, it wasn't even on my radar, right? Yeah. Like, so so normally, as you may have remembered from the previous episode and those who may not, I have a pretty pretty extensive cell phone history in the year of 2020. It's no uh, joke. And, and I was so happy with my 12 Pro Max and the setup I was rocking, but I kind of just glaze over the whole February Samsung event, the whole S21 Ultra, while it looks, you know, pretty awesome, I I completely passed on it. No, I mean, uh, the design was cool. Like, I see yeah, the design looks in great, my right? feed, and I'm just like, okay, well, I'm not in the market. So whenever I'm not in the market for something, I kind of, like, lose interest a little bit. Like, I kind of But that's just... the problem. That's the problem with me, right? So, yeah. like, even if I'm not in the market for something, if I see it, I want it. Yeah, I know. That's true. So what happened was today, the Galaxy Unpacked event... Uh, was coming. We knew that we were going to get new Galaxy Z Fold. We knew that uh, maybe, you know, Z Flip and maybe some other stuff along with it. So uh, I'll go ahead and pull up the browser page here. So I have the Samsung website and prominently they have the Z Fold 3 uh, 5G. Okay. So, uh, you know, pretty, that's probably their flagship that they uh, yeah. announced today. Yeah. And then they note, have some other items too. Note that this replaced the note. Did it really? See what I did there dad joke <laughs> so note what's missing from the lineup today so if that replaces <laughs> the note that's a ma massive deal and uh yeah yeah because uh, the note you know is yep. there was their flagship you know what i mean um so to see them replace it completely that's a shock you know they're really uh putting all their uh i guess all their uh cards in on you know this fold device thinking okay well you know maybe the note buyers will buy this now that it has an S Pen. So it does have an S Pen now. And uh, so we'll get into that. Uh, they also did the Z Flip. So let me actually pull that up too. I'll go to their... Uh, See, I don't know, man. I, I, I think the Z Flip is honestly where it's at. Like, pull up the price on that for a second, Eric. Yeah, so pull I have the, it up. So, 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 like, don't look at that, you know, trade-in price. Look at what the price actually is. I thought it was a thousand dollars. Yeah, so a thousand dollars for the one twenty eight, and then two fifty six is uh, uh like fifty dollars more, which is you know pretty reasonable. So it's insanity. Uh, you, you know the the Z Flip, I could see a lot of people loving this device. I uh, the design. I love this device. I um, love this device. You know, I'll give it to the to Samsung here. I really think they have a clean design on their hands. I mean, this looks modern, sleek. Um, and if you're looking for a portable folding phone, like this is definitely a a great you know looking option so uh, as someone who's owned the z flip 2 yeah was it the z flip 2 was there a z flip 1 uh you know what <laughs> i you don't know, know what happened what you happened? know what happened they had the z flip launch in february and then at uh august it was or maybe a little bit before august actually they released the z flip 5g right and i bet that they were calling that the z flip 2 okay yeah, so okay. I think that's what happened. So, so, so let's go back in time. Um, I had a Z Flip One, uh, and it was probably my second favorite Android phone. Okay. Uh, no, it was my third favorite Android phone because the Pixel Two XL will always have my my number one top spot. It was yeah, just of course. gorgeous phone. Uh, but anyway, right. um, I think I think that the Z Flip One was was really awesome for what it is you know it's it, it says something about you know just flipping a phone open and, and and the satisfying feeling of hanging up on someone in that method yeah of course that really kind of makes it a really unique product and yeah it's it's one of those devices where you can honestly just just really rail on it like you can flip it open you could flick it open it's yeah it's it's built very well it's built you can very get, well. give it that hard flick hard and, flick dude. yeah i've seen videos uh you know of people just kind of like whack and, yeah. uh, you know, just to think like these things you would think to be delicate, but like there's videos on YouTube, people chucking them, 
uh, you know, and then tumbling on the floor and the hinge just yeah. survive. Yeah, I, you know? I think uh, Quinn from Sassy Labs put out a pretty neat yeah. Twitter of him saying things like he never wants to hear people say foldables are delicate, fragile again, or yeah. delicate. And that that kind of is the case, right? Like, you know, yeah. you've had the Z Fold 2, and right. I've had the Z Fold 2, and I've had the Z Flip 1. And in some ways, I can make the argument that that phone was even more durable than a standard phone because your screen is folded in, it's protected, right? Right. So, I don't know. Like, I feel like a lot, uh, a lot of the articles on, on on mainstream media really paints foldables in a bad light, right? Uh, in terms of durability, but that's not really the case at all, right? Uh, you know, it's kind of like when like Tesla autopilot crashes. You know, like yeah. it makes headline news, but like look at how many people crash cars daily. Yeah, so no, that's a great it, point, dude. You, I mean, you know what I mean? Like it's kind of like the. Yeah. So, the, I mean, the thing about the durability of folding phones, it's sort of the highlight, right? Because we we're unsure if these screens can really, and these hinges can hold up to, you know, I guess the test of time. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, we have the Z Fold that's been out for a while now, and and then the Fold 2, and now we're on the, the Fold 3. Um, you know, there's, it, they were right to kind of criticize, or, or at least be skeptical, actually, about the first product. Oh, yeah, for um, sure, for sure. And, you know, as uh, both of us, you know, we've both been in that world where, you know, we were, we were skeptical also, but like we bought them. Uh, you bought the the Z Flip, and then you ended up getting the uh, Z Fold Two, and then I bought the Z Fold Two. And I remember when you actually, I remember when you were first telling me about the Z Flip, and I was just shocked that. Dude, I like, love it. I was like, you're I lying. I still love it. I was like, you're lying. It can't be no. that durable. It's no, plastic. it's so good. You know it's so saying? good. It's actually, yeah. You know, if you haven't watched my uh, uh, Z Fold Two review on YouTube, uh, Fit Dread YouTube channel, check it out because. You know, I, I basically complimented it and, and we'll said, drop a link to that in the description of this video yeah, as well. hundred percent. So. so check it out. Um, basically, I, I, I tried to be realistic with the review and I was like, these are my honest opinions. It's durability isn't a concern. Um, the plastic screen I thought was a concern, uh, you know, but in the, the crease, I thought the crease was a concern. Uh, turns out the crease you can't see when you're actually using. No, the phone. not at all. When you're consuming content, so, you don't see it. If you see like those crazy angles where like you you like look at it off axis, like you're gonna yeah. see it then. But no one uses a phone that way. No. So in practice, it's it's a non-issue. It's a non-starter. The screen is on, yeah. and you're viewing content like you normally would. Yeah, it's it 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 literally disappears. Yeah. It's not like and and that's not me downplaying it. It literally disappears. So I will say one thing. Uh, the uh, Z Fold 2, uh, there have been reports of people having issues, uh, specifically around the crack, the crease. The crease uh, down the middle? Yeah, yeah I so did see that. I'll, I'll show you an article uh, or a post. I didn't Reddit. experience any of it, but uh, so maybe he, someone else has. So on Reddit here, this is just uh, one of the 10 hours ago posts. He says, finally, this happened one day before the Z Fold 3 releases. And, you know, in the picture, you can see right down the middle is a, a, a sort of crack, wow, uh, yeah. a, an issue. Uh, yeah, this is that. not the only one. Uh, I wonder if I can just scroll here and find, you know, there's a lot of videos and stuff and hype about the Z Fold 3 coming out. But, um, you know, I, I was looking at, uh, hold on, let me sort by like top weekly. Because, uh, uh, you know, I've been seeing stuff on... If I if I find it, I'll pull it up. But basically, I've experienced this uh, in a small effect myself. What in the on the Z Fold two, uh, I had started to notice a tiny stress crack near the bottom in of, your in your screen. Uh, yeah, or, on the folding or, part. Or is yeah. this the back glass that you cracked? No, so the back glass I did crack. Uh, which exciting for the Z Fold uh, Z Fold three is they don't oh, have the that. Oh, you back, right? Yeah. They don't have that, so you can see a uh, in the. Hold on, let me let me just pull up the Z Fold three uh, on the in the browser um, and see if I can pull the picture up. Of course, they're gonna make it hard. Maybe I just go to their marketing, <laughs> but yeah. instead of that curved part, now they have uh, they have um, like a flat part there, which I was pretty happy to see. Um, yeah, what's what is really interesting to me though, and it's one thing I've noticed in like some like uh, third party videos yeah. about the Z Fold three already, is it's matte, right? So it's matte aluminum. So like unlike the iPhone that you know has like the uh, the like matte tempered glass, yeah. I wonder how that looks, or or or, or how that will be like uh, uh, like scratch resistant wise. 
Yeah, I'm really curious about that as well. Uh, I, I know that in my uh, pre-order, I had actually got a case. And I got the case that comes with the uh, uh, the Z Fold S Pen. So look at you, dude. Yeah, look I, at you. You're this is up. actually my first uh, S Pen. So uh, you know, we'll see. I will tell you, uh, you know, going back, having owned the Note 20 Ultra, the S Pen works fine. It, yeah. it works great, but it honestly feels like if you breathed on it the wrong way, it would bend in half. Yeah. So, um, just looking at this thing. Okay, so. Like here, I'll pull up a picture. So here's kind of the Z Fold 3, and uh, right there in that crack, uh, kind of near the bottom is where I saw a little stress crack. And uh, it was really not visible when viewing content, but it was there. And what I had seen is uh, other people having that same crack, but kind of worse. <clears throat> and uh, so the, these these phones can have durability problems. Uh, you know, I like that was a tiny crack. I don't know what I did to cause it. Uh, you know, I didn't really feel like I had a weird, unusual use case for it. I didn't feel like I wore it down. Like I didn't treat it badly. Sure. Um, sure. So I was surprised to see it. Now, what, what I will say is even though you're paying like for the Z fold two, it was like 2000 or something. This one's like 1800 starting. Yeah. Um, yeah I think it's like $200 off, you know, or this one in the previous version, the Z fold two and the Z Fold 3 both have one free screen replacement. So, so this one does as well. Interesting. It does. So Interesting. when you're paying the price uh, that you're paying, know that it might be that they're like, well, they might need screen replacements. <laughs> you know sure. what I mean? So sure. you might be paying for that free screen replacement uh, if you ever need it, technically. Because you're, you know, you're paying premium for this device. Yeah. Um, and you're not just paying for that R and D. You're also playing, uh, paying for any sort of uh, um, RMAs that they got to do for this device. Or, too. or I wonder, I wonder if, they, if, if if like that's like a that's like a profitability thing, right? Yeah. So like maybe that there's a there's they they know you know how durable a screen is. Yeah. So the amount of screens. So like so like let's say that like they have you know a, a sample set of 500 phones. And then they realize that, hey, in natural testing, you know, these 500 phones, we've only had to replace 10 screens. Right. So, so we can offer this value to customers and not really hurt our bottom line too much because not that many are going to need to be replaced. Yeah. So that's so, kind of the optimistic view of it, right? Right. So right. if like they're the, optimistic obviously... about their screen, um, but I'm sure that they, you know, they accounted for the amount of RMAs that are going to happen. And they're of like, they you know, let's add that to the price. So ultimately you're paying for those. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, they probably did the math and was like, we can offer this uh, to appease the customers that have the issues and also to protect us uh, from any backlash that might be screen related. So obviously there would probably be a lot more flack to Samsung had they not offered this free screen replacement. And, and it's a new folding. It's a new device. It's, a, it's kind of a new product category. So you would think that Samsung would be like, okay, well, we want to do the safe thing and, you know, offer the, uh, our customers like the best customer service possible for this new product. Can I point something out to you? Because I just went on Best Buy's website. Sure. And through carriers, they have a 30 month financing. I think most phones are 24, but still 30 months. That's pretty um, great. Uh, it's, it's, you know, like, like how phones have like that device upgrade program or whatnot, and, with like 0% APR. Yeah. But, uh, the Z Fold 2 was $80 for monthly payments. Right. And they have a plan, I guess they worked out with carriers, where it starts $400 off. Right. Uh, and it's forty six sixty six a month for three for, for 30 months. Okay. So so think about it this way, right? So like if you want to if you want to go buy an iPhone, okay? Right. And and, and let's pretend you're someone who doesn't upgrade every year, you know, because I feel like we're probably in the minority at this point. Maybe not. Yeah, we probably are though. Probably. Let's say let's say let's say you, you you wanted to go buy an iPhone 12 Pro Max, and you're going to buy an iPhone 12 Pro Max, and you want it in gold, and you want the 256 version. Yeah. Uh, because 128 is a joke. That's fifty dollars a month on Verizon yeah. for two years. Yeah. So literally, for a cheaper monthly payment, granted it's over thirty months, right. you can get a Z Fold three. Now, yeah, so. and, and, and why I'm emphasizing that is because, you know, like people like you and I, we're kind of fortunate that if we, if we want something, right. we're okay to buy it. 
And right. I think what really made me, you know, like drive that low monthly cost home because and, and people, you know, having to save and kind of, you know, work towards larger purchases. Right. Um, the Xbox subsidization program, you know, where you can buy an Xbox Series S for $24 a month or a Series X for $35 a month. Yeah. Like there are a lot of people out there who can't afford $300, but they can afford $24 a month. And then it really got me thinking because the Series S bundle was selling even better. So, you know, for a lot of people, 10 months, or I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, $10 each month, it's a big deal. Yeah. So, you know, coming back and then moving down the the, uh, the monthly payment price from uh, carriers from right. $80 to mid-40s, I think that's going to see a lot of movement in this phone. Yeah, maybe. I mean, here's the thing. This phone is still in luxury phone prices. It is. Uh, it's it is. really, yeah. it's hard to be like, oh yeah, look at the value. I mean, it depends because it's sort of a phone slash t tablet hybrid. So you might be like, oh, well, you know, it's, you're paying more, but you're getting more. And that's absolutely a fact, but it's also, you know, still a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people. It is. It is. Uh, you know, you'd still be uh, cheaper getting a phone and an iPad. Um, it's, it's I kind don't of know close. about that. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, it definitely used to be, uh, whether uh, fun, or not yeah. it still is. Yeah, because, um, you, know. uh, you know, if you get the 12 Pro, that, that's 1000 And then yeah. if you get, like, an M1 iPad, that's, like, 900 bucks. So, yeah. So, okay, so let's talk about the Z Fold 3 for a minute. So uh, something happened today that I didn't expect. And uh, actually, if you would have told me earlier in the day that I'd be ordering one of these, I would have been like, <laughs> yeah, right, dude. Uh, but I did, uh, and <laughs> that's so I did funny too, to me. For like two hours. Uh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I know that uh, in your case, you you were like, uh, you know, it's kind of like you get hype and then you do it, and then you're like, oh well, I can always cancel. So right, you did right. it to to get your spot, and then you're like, now I can decide. And exactly. uh, I, yeah. I think you've decided, but uh, I have decided. You know, and I think I've decided you know too. I canceled. So he canceled. I, I've held, and uh, you know it's kind of funny because uh, we've both been sort of back and forth on this. It's really a weird uh, dilemma because it is. It's like this device is so exciting that you want to want you want to want it. You want to get you do. it. You do. Um, it's like whether or not you can justify it at the end of the day that you know actually influences your buying decisions. And like in your case, you're like, I can't do it. Yeah, so, you know, just, uh, and we'll unpack this a little bit later, mm. uh, but my use cases, my daily use cases really revolve around an iPad workflow, and I have yeah. zero interest in moving away from my iPad. So, so you like, know, that kind of, like, sorry, Okay, on. so for yeah. you, like the iPad, so can you just tell the viewers kind of like what your device sort of uh like what's in my bag sort of thing when yeah, it comes sure. to devices dude. sure so in my pocket right now is a 12 pro max in blue which i regret the color uh because i'm the type of weirdo who has to match their watch band to their watch so i also got the blue watch and i'm pretty much locked to two watches yeah. or, or two watch it's bands blues yeah the blues <laughs> dude neutrals. i got the blue blues yep. uh so you know long story short basically uh if i'm home I may not even know where this guy is because I do everything on my iPad. I do everything on my iPad at my desk. I don't want to say I, I work from an iPad, but it's like my companion, right? Like I take notes on my iPad if I walk into a meeting. I uh, use the Apple Pencil and I take notes on that. I use uh, Drafts a lot, which is a really great app. I use MindNode for like mind maps when I need to plan out something for the office. I do... I use Things 3 as a, uh, like a task tracker. Right. I'm really integrated into the whole, you know, iPad as my, my one device. So it's kind of like your Swiss army knife. Kind of. Yeah. So like, you know, when, when I'm an iPhone in my pocket, I can take calls on my iPad. I can text from my iPad. It kind of adds more value to the device I use the most. Yeah. So for me, for me, switching to the Z Fold 3 would mean that my SIM would have to be in a non-iOS device, which kind of moves me out of that walled garden. Yeah. So I, I, I lose functionality of the device I use the most. So if I'm really looking to downsize my phone uh, and downsize you know, the footprint that's in my pocket, because realistically, it's not really something I interact with all that often, moving to the Z Fold would just make the device that I use every day 
less efficient. And yeah. that's ultimately the reason why I right. canceled my pre-order. It has nothing to do with the Z Fold itself. I think the yeah. Z Fold is an absolutely a stellar product. Yeah. Uh, and that is the dream because if, if, if I could fold my iPad up to iPhone size, yeah. that would be the device I have. Yeah. You, you know, know, I but, was thinking about that too. Cause I mean, yeah. eventually I think Apple will roll into that. Um, but you know, it's going to take time. They're going to do it right when they do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so hopefully they do. Cause I was thinking about it, uh, earlier. I was like, if I wouldn't be having this conversation with you about the Z Fold three, if Apple did it, uh, I right, would probably right. just no, I go feel the same way. I feel and, the same uh, way and get whatever I fold or whatever the heck they want to call it. Uh, I'd probably go for that. Cause <laughs> you know, here's the thing for me, uh, the Z fold two, I absolutely love that phone. I, in the review, I said it was the absolutely best phone for me right now, and mm -hmm. I think that still stands true to to a a little bit of a. Um, I still I still think it's a little true because the iPhone, it's it's kind of a great phone and it's a great platform. And uh, I went back to it. Uh, you know, it's funny because uh, I I <laughs> when the 12 Pro Max came out, I think I had the Z Fold two at the time, and you did. I you went did. out and got one. Cause I was so caught up in the hype, you know, like we just talked about, and I did Wait, a lot you got of the Z Fold or the iPhone. I, I got the iPhone, so I already had the Z Fold uh, Fold Two, and I was like, the grass is greener on the other side. I got it. I missed the iPhone. Yeah. I want to get yeah. an iPhone, so I went out and bought one, brought it home, and I did a lot of side by side testing with the Z Fold with with my use cases. So I, I do light gaming. I do a lot of Reddit browsing, uh, uh, web browsing, and I also do a lot of YouTube videos. A lot of YouTube videos. So I did side by sides with all of that content, and I and for like ninety percent of the stuff, the Z Fold Two was a winner. The um, but you know the thing the iPhone does is it just does. It does everything so well, like solidly. Visual voicemail, I didn't get very well on. Uh, no, uh, it's it's a it's a crapshoot on Android. It's you know? terrible, and I've like, really uh, grown to love it on iOS. I have so. a buddy of mine who uh, who kind of flip flop back and forth. You know, he had both phones for a little bit, and for like the past four or five years, he's just been consistently iPhone, and he still has like a like an older Pixel Two XL uh, assigned to him for work. And uh, he picked it up the other day just to like kind of see what it was like because in our in one of our group chats we we're talking about like the new Samsung launch prior to the event, and he just happened to go to the App Store, and you know he typed in weather because he's a big weather nut, and all of these really obtuse just just applications were coming up like Spider Man Gangster City Clinger to yeah. 2021 the best weather app, and it had like 20,000 downloads, yeah, and like. 6,000 five-star reviews. Yeah. Like the curation on the app store is just not there, you know? So it's not, dude. I mean, there's a lot of apps that, that I personally used on Android that yeah, kind of yeah. felt like they were a web wrapper. Like they didn't feel like that they were an actual native app. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I know like, what you mean, dude. Like I'm just looking at the Play Store now and like discover recommended games and they want yeah, me to play Roblox, it, dude. Like Roblox, dude? Get out of like, here, dude. It's like... It's like go, it's like going to steampower.com on a brand new account that you've yeah. never like been on and then going to this the uh, discover section. It is yeah. seriously the wild west. Yeah, it, I don't know. It's just like the quality level, like the curation that they do. It's just so minimal. It's very minimal. It's right. like anything could show up there, which I mean pros and cons to both approaches, but if you want like the most solid experience, the uh the way Apple does it is is pretty good for that. Uh, but I mean, then again, there's pros and cons. People Actually, argue in favor of the Play Store. You can get emulators, you can get all kinds of stuff, uh, but you also got to filter through the garbage. Uh, so let me ask you something. Sure. Let me ask you something because I just happened to swing by the Play Store as well. Is Facebook that bloated of an app that there's a Facebook Lite now? Wh what? Dude, there's two Facebook apps. No. I, I'm serious. Oh my God, you're kidding. Hold on. I'm looking, dude. Is this real? Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. So I'm, I yeah. pulled it up. Facebook, Facebook Lite, Lite. Look at that. Look has at that. like half a star more than Facebook. Crazy. Well, there you go. Uh, okay. So it looks like uh, Facebook Lite app. Uh, small, allowing you to save space on your phone and use Facebook in 2G conditions. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So are you kidding me? What What world are we living in, dude? The, the worst timeline. That's what. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, you know, getting back on topic, 
uh, and, and I, I could segue into something else that that, that, that didn't really yeah. uh, please me on my Z Fold 2 is Samsung just needs to drop the Galaxy Store. They just, they have to, right? Like, it sucks. Like, yeah, I kind of just ignored it. You or, know, or, but... or, or, or going places for different apps yeah. is really confusing, you know? So, like, if you get a Samsung watch, yeah. where, where do you download Samsung gear at, Eric? Uh, the, Gal- the Galaxy Store, I guess. Where where won't you find the gear app, Eric? Uh, the Play Store? There you go. Yeah. Well, it's got to change because now they're partnering with uh, 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 Google with they their are. Wear they are. OS stuff. So, you know, the, all that's going to change. I don't know if they'll actually get rid of the Galaxy Store, but, you know. I, I don't think they will because they have a, a decent amount of partnerships on there. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, I know Fortnite's a big one for them, right? Yeah. I mean, it was at least. I'm, I can't speak for sure if it still is. Yeah. Uh, but I don't foresee them getting rid of it. It was just really weird to me to, you know, all right, I'm, go- right. I'm going to go to the Play Store and update my apps. Then I have to go to the Galaxy Store and update those apps as well. You know, right. It, it, it just feels lame. disjointed, right? I just like, turn it on auto like update if it was there, experience. you know, and just forget about the Galaxy Store. But. Yeah. You yeah. know, it, unless I absolutely have to, but yeah. So yeah. real quick, I just want to go and talk about the hype things with the Z Fold 3. You know, the, so the thing about it. Uh, a lot of people were saying, I, like I saw a couple people where their sentiment was they're disappointed. And uh, I say, why? I mean, it's really? kind of like, like, I'm That's like. That's a hot take, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. A lot of people were like, I'm disappointed. I'm like, really? Because the Z I Fold 2. I just want to stop you there for a second. Yeah. And say that. Eric and I, you know, prior to the Z Fold 3 coming out, when we both got our Z Fold 2s, yeah. we made a list, right, of what we'd want to see in the next generation, and the Z Fold 3 literally checked every box. Yes. Everything. Yes. Like, like, like it wasn't like, oh, well, we're still missing this. Literally no. everything. We Okay, so because we were making a pros and cons list, right, to right. kind of just have to, – to get a little bit of perspective on, like, if I stayed with an iPhone, uh, these are the pros and cons. If we went with the Z Fold, these are the pros and cons. And yeah, that was one of the things is we lose water resistance. The Z Fold 2 didn't have it. Now with the Z Fold 3, you have it. Okay. We d- you didn't have an S Pen with the Z Fold 2. You know, a lot of people wished it did, and now it does. You know, they, they included an S Pen. skeptical on that. Well, yeah, because, yeah, I am too. But, you know, I watched a couple videos today, and it didn't look like it would be bad. Uh, I watched the Linus experience play looks fantastic, yeah. right? Like the experience looks fantastic. But what's really concerning to me. Uh, is apparently this screen is the same technology as in the Z Fold 2. Right. Uh, with a better screen protector. So I don't know what that better screen protector means. Um, but I did notice that when you use your S Pen, there's a little switch on it that switches between S Pen yeah. and Z Fold. So, so that's with the uh, new premium S that's, Pen. That's, that's with the S Pen Pro, right? Yeah, the yeah. Pro. Yeah, so what's different about it? Okay, so the you know difference I mean? uh, is the if you're in... With that pen specifically, because if you buy the Z Fold S Pen, it's already already always always Z, in Z Fold. Yeah, mode? it's in like a pass. It, I think it's a passive pen, believe it or not. The 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 Pro one oh. is active, but it's oh, also. So let me ask you a question. Yeah, and 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 if you can't answer it, that's fine. Um, does it connect via Bluetooth anymore? Uh, I wouldn't think it would if it's passive, but I, I don't know. One of the features of a Note that was super cool is it could be a remote shutter. You know what yeah, I, mean? so like, I don't think so, it's as cool. So, as like, that. if if like you go out places and like you want to take like a selfie, like you don't have to hold the phone because it's yeah. a shutter. Good question. You know? and, I and, actually yeah. don't know because that that's one of the things I have to look into that. But I will say that switch. What it does is if you're using the S Pen on a regular glass phone, it's as normal. But when you flip okay. it to the Z Fold mode, what it does is the the tip. Uh, it, it basically uh, the difference between the new S Pen for the Fold is the tip uh, is kind of springy. So when so, you're writing with it, it so doesn't apply pressure. Yes. So the pressure it applies is significantly less. It's more of a floaty, uh, you know, you don't feel like you're writing onto a hard surface because it's okay. kind of glides over the screen. Okay, okay. Uh, and it's really because, you know, the folding display, like you were saying, if the technology is the same, uh, then it can't, it's not durable enough for a hard pen like, yeah, uh, yeah. like an S pen, like the original S pens. It's too hard, and you'll actually scar the surface. It's kind of like your fingernail. You could actually, if you pushed your nail against the screen, cause an indent. 
and uh, that would be the same with a pen. So the new pen's designed to not really apply that level of pressure, uh, which is fascinating. I think that's interesting. We'll see if it's good. I mean, I bought the S Pen, so we'll see if it's good. But I'm glad that they're doing it. So, uh, oh, so am I. So am I. You but know, I think I, I'm most hype about the water resistance. You know, that was one of the things. Like, I, yeah, right. It just kind of like it kind of bothers you once you're so used to it uh, to to lose it. You know, I'm like, you know, what's weird about that? Yeah. To your point is is I don't really have a lot of instances where I use the water resistance. Yeah. But it's just something that feels nice, right? Like if I'm <laughs> at the bar pouring drinks or if I'm yeah. near the hot tub or whatever, right? I don't worry. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but so, when, I, when I had my Z Fold 2, I yeah. would worry in that situation. One of the, um, sorry. One of the things I would do is actually uh, take my phone in the shower with me. <laughs> You're a weirdo. Yeah, I am. So, well, what I would do is uh, either I'd have a video up or uh, Spotify or something, and I would just sit it up uh, on my little stand in the shower and just have it play music. <laughs> so I couldn't do that with the fold. I might be weird, but, you know, I used to do Dude, that. Because why not? just do my solution. What's that? You ready for this complex? Yeah. HomePod Mini in the bathroom. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Done. See, I don't really Done. have to worry about it now because I have uh, I have speakers in my bathroom ceiling. <laughs> are they smart speakers? They are now. There you uh, go. I can AirPlay 2 to them. So. They're beautiful. Yeah. Beauteous. So it's not a problem now. But, you know, at the same time, I got like a jacuzzi in my bathtub. So I kind of like to just lay in it and be yeah. on my phone. And... Uh, <laughs> So, Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, that's a good point. That's a good point. So the I, iPad is not waterproof. No, it isn't. So that's only. Is that weird? Why you, by the isn't way? it? I was going to say, like, that's a be? really easy design for them to do that. Yeah. Give me a waterproof iPad, dude. Like, why not? That's you know? a really easy design for them to do that. I don't see why not. They, they've they been doing it on their phones. It's honestly a pretty. Uh, there's not like a lot of ports or anything on an iPad. Let me look this up really quick. It'd is be a the lot Tab easier S7 than a. Uh, waterproof? Uh, I doubt it let me see i don't know of a single tablet that is so yeah it is waterproof wow um, oh, wait, wait wait hold on hold on i'm gonna just pull up the uh the z fold 3's uh website here i mean this is yeah, just a s pen example here they got multi-app and then he's doing a sketch okay cool you know are you actually gonna you know be doing this no but it's cool you know league of legends i actually played league of legends wild whatever uh, on the Z Fold 2, it, it's pretty much amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, new camera system on the back, 12 mix, twelve megapixels all around. No, it's not waterproof. Um, Just wanted to clarify. Okay. Um, and then, you know, here's another interesting thing. I, I can't believe you haven't talked about it yet. The, uh, the, the selfie camera on the inside display is uh, behind the display. Very, yeah. very interesting. Now, a couple things to note: the uh, the actual quality of the camera decreased, but really, you don't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter on this device. Um, but it's super cool that they even do it because I mean, it's just going to be a more immersive experience using the device. You don't have any pinhole cut out for the the. Uh, ca it's the worth camera mentioning anymore. too that the uh, the actual screen resolution is less is less pixel density where the camera is. It is so you'll actually notice uh, where the camera module is, right? I mean, they show it in this photo, um, but it, it doesn't quite look like this. There's been um, you're gonna have to go online and look at some videos, but you can see the pixels because the way that they do it is it's uh, it's not pixel dense at all, so they can turn the pixels off and then be able to see through it almost like a uh, screen door effect, so to speak. Uh, so you do lose some sharpness. But then Samsung compensates with some image processing to kind of bring it back. Still doesn't look great, but it doesn't really matter. It's a great on the trade Z, off. You it's know, a great it's a great trade off. I think that um, because like if you really care about camera quality, you're gonna open, you're gonna use the uh, rear cameras, right? Right. Um, so just the fact that they added that, I think that's really cool. They didn't have to do it. I didn't think the pinhole camera was a problem, but you know, cool. Hey, hey, no camera is the best solution to that yeah i know but a lot of people that might want to use like face unlock you know i i get it uh but to be fair oh, no, i just mean uh uh covering it up you know like yeah like, like it not being visible like this is definitely a step in the direction we need to be going we'll see if we can ever get there but like yeah i'm pretty happy about this yeah. solution i think it's pretty i cool. agree 
I agree. So, yeah, do you uh, have any last uh, closing thoughts on the full three, or should we be talking about the uh, Z Flip? Because I know that's your baby. It is. It is. Uh, I do want to also mention yeah. uh, on the Z Fold, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Thomas Brown edition, the the the, the absolutely ludicrous yeah. uh, collaboration with Thomas Brown style is back of, again yeah. okay. for both folding phones. So if that's your style, those are available as well. Yeah. Uh, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, we'll go on to Z Flip, but uh, real quick, I just want to say I, the reason I ordered it, so... Because I, I don't think I covered that. So. No, let's go over your reason because yeah, we so talked about why I canceled mine. Real so let's quick. Go over why you're keeping Yeah, because we don't have too much time to talk about it, but I just want to summarize. So, uh, you know, I it's always the grass is always greener on the other side, right? So I, I flip flopped. You know, I had the Z uh, Fold 2. I loved it. And then all of a sudden I had this urge grass is greener on the iPhone side. Bought the 12 Pro Max. I'm using it now. I love it. It's a great phone. I, uh, I don't, you know, think it was a bad decision to go this direction. But like, there's this longing to go back, you know, there's, you know, after using this and I'm on Reddit and I'm on YouTube and I'm trying to prop it up and I'm just not able to, cause like, there's so many times when I'm like trying to watch a video, like I used to just fold the screen in half and have it like be its own stand, you know, watching a YouTube video yeah. and like, I'm, I'm sitting there eating That's dinner. That's such a nice feature. I'm, yeah, I'm eating dinner and I'm trying to watch a video and I'm like, I got to find something to prop my phone against. So I could have it up while I'm wa watching a video. And I'm just like, dang it. You know, I was like, if I had the fold, you know, I would have had this solved by now. And then, like, there's a couple other things, too. The fold that just, it kind of did. Uh, I had a b brighter screen. Like I said, it's better. It's a better content consumer. So I wanted it. But, like, I also didn't want to get rid of the iPhone. The iPhone has more features that are, like, un, I guess, uh, unacceptable to not have. So... In my case, I decided now's the time to become one of those lucrative, like, rare two-phone people. You know what I Flip mean? Flip a coin and see what phone you're pulling out the pocket. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, it's I, you saw it on the Linus Tech, Tech Tip videos. He was like, you know, he was looking at the, he's like, yeah, Z Fold 2. And then he, like, pulled a iPhone out of his back pocket, right? Like, he's an Android guy, guy at heart, but he's still rocking an iPhone in his back pocket. You know why? Like, well, yeah, he runs a company and... Well, what's always on his wrist? Well, the Apple Watch. Right. So he kind right. of, actually, he still rocks the Apple Watch and to basically, uh, even though he's an Android guy, uh, just to tell the Android world, like, yo, you suck at yeah. making a smartwatch. So I yeah. think that's hilarious. Uh, you know, we'll see. And actually, a part of this event is sort of uh, is a smartphone announcement as well with the uh, Galaxy Watch 4. But let's talk about that after we're done. So real with the quick, flip. Uh, yeah, because I need to know where is your SIM card going to live. So that's a that's like it's going to live in the iPhone. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be honest yeah. with you. So the iPhone does phone stuff better than any Android phone. Visual voicemail, iMessage. Um, you know, uh, I like the way iPhone blocks spam calls better. And plus, I want to. I don't have the cellular version of the Apple Watch, but um, you know, I don't want to lose that like um, mobile Apple Watch experience if I'm off of Wi-Fi or something. So what I'm gonna do is just, I mean, if I'm on the go and I have no access to Wi-Fi, I'll just tether right. my Z Fold Two to the iPhone. That'll be for data. But so like, really, you know, so really, your Z Fold Three is going to be yeah. a folding iPad. Yeah, in. basically. So for me, I you know I picked right. up my iPad, and uh, for me, the iPad's never in the right place at the right time. Uh, you know, it's always across the house. Alex likes to use it, my son. So it's like always somewhere, and I gotta like look for it. I use find my iPhone or whatever, uh, find my app to find it, and like I always end up just picking my phone up. And to me, like the Z Fold. Two when I had it at the time, and the Z Phone Three, what it's going to be is like the the ultimate device that's just with me at all times. Sure, it's going to be sure. in my pocket. It's like a near tablet like experience, but it's so convenient to be in my pocket all yeah. the time. I mean, you kind of nailed it right there, right? Like yeah. portability is, is it's a big deal. The, yeah, portability yeah. is a huge deal. Like you end up going with the more convenient route ninety nine percent of the time. At least I do, because I don't want to go looking around the house for my iPad. You know, I just want to like do whatever I'm trying to do right then. So having, yeah, uh, you know, I'm kind of an odd duck. Mine's always with me. You know, I kind yeah. of, if I could pull that off, 
You know what I mean? Yeah. I thought about buying yeah. another iPad just so my son can mess with one and I can have the other one in like my spot. But you know, it's fine. So I, I really actually did like, uh, the way, uh, Samsung did the Z fold two with their multi app and stuff. And I, I want to yeah, have job. access to the Android ecosystem in some way. So to me, it's kind of nice to have the Z fold as well as the iPhone. I have the, I don't have to worry about if the grass is greener if I have all the grass, is what I said to you the other day. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to be the rare guy that has both, but because, just because I can't choose. It's really it's really yeah. uh, causing me a lot of mental uh, stress trying to decide between two God-tier phones. Dude, uh, I, on this page, in this having this conversation, I, I may pre-order again. So yeah. thank you for That's, that. I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> so... so Let's move into the flip. Yeah, finally. So uh, I'm on the uh, the website here, yeah. Z, uh, Z Flip 3. So this phone isn't – I'm not in the market for this phone. I am. Um, you had the Gonna original. i going to raise my hand and say that I am in the market for this. Yeah, so you had the original, and the price is right. So what makes you like this form factor? What, what makes you think this form factor is actually like market ready and people are going to want it? Uh, sure. So, you know, if you asked me a couple of years ago, uh, what iPhone am I getting or what phone am I getting? I'd be like the big boy, dude. Like, what do you think I am? You know? <laughs> uh, but, what do you think I am? This yeah. Point? But, but like, as I, as I get older or, and as I start to, you know, do more things that don't revolve around my phone. Right. Uh, having a smaller footprint is a big deal. Yeah. I'm uh, sure. it's, it sounds weird, I know, because like you're probably gonna say, "Well, phone's not epic anyway," but it kind of is, you know. Like, uh, especially if you're doing things that require different ranges of motion in your legs, yeah. or you know, what have you, or you know, even you know, picking up and holding it. Like, I have a permanent indentation in my left hand. I, I'm left-handed in, in, in my pinky just from holding phones my entire life. Uh, the, the small phone is super lucrative to me. Uh, yeah, let me say something because, uh, you know, in my opinion, I, I think you're onto something, man. I uh, I recently uh, bought, you know, when we went back to iPhones, I bought the 12 Pro Max and my wife bought the 12 Mini. And I am in love with the 12 Mini. It is dude. amazingly awesome. Uh, I, I the How small it is, how light it is, it's kind of magical. And I think that uh, the Z Flip 3 is what they're calling it, kind of... It kind of has some of that magic. What do you think? It does. It does. So, you know, going back just kind of a little bit to the, uh, to last week's podcast, uh, for a, for a brief stint, I had an iPhone SE2, you know, like the, the kind of like the lower end model that had like the physical home button and stuff. Yeah. And I really was interested in that because of the size. Yeah. And I loved that phone. It sounds yeah. really weird. Right. But, uh, even uh, my one coworker at work who, who knows that I change phones like clothes right. said, wow, I'm really shocked you stuck with that phone for so long. Okay. And honestly, it's, it's, it's the form factor, yeah. you know, like it's just, it's cool. What, it's cool. What, when you hold it in your hand, like you can, you can get a good purchase on it. It's yeah. just, it sounds weird too, yeah. but a, a smaller phone means I use my phone less. And well, you're probably thinking, why is that a good thing? Well, because then I can spend time doing other things that are more productive, right? Yeah. So I can either do something on my iPad, which will be probably be more productive than just browsing Reddit on my phone. I can do something on my computer. I could do something outdoors. I, I just feel like it becomes more of a yeah, more of a tool and, and more of a device yeah. and less of a distraction. I think what it um, what it does is it lets the phone be better at doing phone things in a more uh, portable form. Exactly, factor. exactly. Okay. So as someone who's, you know, kind of adopted this, this like, oh, I hate to use like old Samsung marketing terms, but this this life companion of my iPad. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I, I don't have the time. I'm not even sure where my phone is. Yeah. You know? Well, so, the thing is, most of the time, a phone isn't the optimal device to be doing whatever it is you're doing. It's not. It's, okay. the, it's, the, it's the device that's on you. Right? It is. And so, that's why a lot, that's why, you know, in my case, uh, you know, I want it to be a better device for those things. So I'm getting the Z uh, Fold 3. In your case, it's like, well, I'd rather use an iPad or any other device. So I need a, a device that is kind of just out of the way. 
until it's desired for its function. So I agree with those things completely. Okay. You know, uh, uh, there's a famous photographer, Chase Jarvis, and someone asked him, because he, he shoots with like eight or nine cameras, you know, what's the best camera? He goes, the one I have with me. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that kind of applies to phones. You know, so I think in your regard, if you're looking for a mobile communicator or something along that, along, you know, that right. that mindset, the Z Fold 3 is something you're always going to have with you. It sounds like you're not someone who carries your iPad everywhere. So naturally, yeah. you want the best experience for what's always going to be on you. Yeah, but I'm kind of sure. coming back full circle and bringing this more about the Z Flip 3. Yeah. Uh, gripes I had with it were, of course, waterproofing, which is fixed. Yep. Um, and the cover glass. The cover glass was useless on the first Z Fold. This one actually looks really nice. Like, no, it does. I'm really drawn to the style and the aesthetic of this phone. Like, it honestly looks like an iPhone 6 that folds in half without the shitty aluminum. Yeah. I'm actually it's, super it's, impressed with this look. Um, oh, dude, the aesthetic on this is, is right where I want to live. Like, this phone right here, yeah. in my opinion, looks more futuristic than the Z Fold. It's super clean. It's minimalist. It's I love this. Uh, I actually think the cover glass looks really cool. I love the cover glass look. I, yeah. I love everything about this phone, man. Yeah. This is like, really cool. I mean, you know, I wouldn't dog on you for getting it. Uh, as since you're an iPad guy, like I like to me, I'm not as much of an iPad guy as like I once was. I kind of like the in between an iPhone and like a regular iPad size. Sure. So like the to me the folds like where it's at, but like for you, if you're such an iPad guy, like you don't need a big phone. So like I, yeah. I also want to point out just for anyone listening, I'm I'm an I, uh, iPad 11 guy. The yeah. 12.9 is a little too big for yeah, my yeah, britches. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I think the iPad 12 is a great is is a great replacement for people who don't have a laptop. Yes. Uh, but I use my iPad handheld a lot, and the 11 is right where I want to live. Yeah. Uh, but you know, coming back again to the Z Flip 3, uh, there's a lot of improvements here that I just really I just really enjoy. You know, and it takes me back to my first Z Flip, where honestly, I think I enjoyed using it more than my Fold, just because yeah. someone who likes a smaller phone, phone form factor and just being able to, you know, really be ignorant with how quickly and, and violently you can flip and unflip this phone. Yep. It's just fun. You know what I mean? It's like it's like the world's most expensive fidget spinner. Yeah. But but it is absolutely worth it. Like, yep, like yep. it's a really cool device. Yeah. It's probably the first foldable that I would recommend to like a normal person because I think it has it checks a lot of boxes and it meets a price point that most would consider acceptable in twenty twenty one. Yep. Uh and, and 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 it's not like it's like it's not like it's scout it's like it's compromising anywhere, right? Like uh what no. processor is in this phone? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, but I'm I mean, come on, right any, most modern yeah. smartphones are pretty much like yeah. good. They're pretty much good. Yeah. Um, I want to move on to the next topic, uh, which is, well, the next item they that I really care about that they uh, put out, uh, the Galaxy Watch 4. So okay. there's one interesting thing uh, about this one. You were saying it doesn't run Tizen OS, which is the last. Actually, this one still it. may. Okay. Because so, like, I'm really I curious. I was looking at pictures. Yeah. Um, and it still looks like Tyson to me. Well, they have the Galaxy. No, they're not. No, no. They, it, that's that's actually the new Wear OS 3. Okay. It's, it's confirmed. So, so. it's funny because they have uh, the Watch 4 Classic and the Watch 4. 4 uh, Classic being a little bit more money. So I don't know what the actual difference is um, in the, the different styles. Um, it looks like the uh, Classic has a little bit larger of a diameter screen. Uh, but... Honestly, the Watch 4 looks pretty sleek. So I don't know what the difference is, but there, you know, there's a Watch 4 and 4 Classic. The What's interesting thing about this is uh, the OS is, uh, you know, the new Watch OS. Uh, Samsung partnered with Google and, to kind of combat the Apple Watch. Is that <laughs> kind of like the idea? <laughs> is that kind of like good what luck. they... I mean, yeah, that's good the luck. Good yeah, luck. See, that's the thing. So idea. actually... <laughs> Funny enough, on my desk is a, uh, this is the uh, Galaxy Watch 3, okay? Uh, what what, notice the what wa watch is on your wrist, if any? This is the... This guy. Yeah, I got the Apple this Watch. Guy. So, the, the thing is, okay, this was me, right? Like, I went, I ditched my, I, uh, my Apple Watch and my iPhone, went full Samsung, got the Galaxy Watch 3, got the Z Fold 2, 
and really embrace the ecosystem for a little bit. Turns out that Galaxy Watch sucks. Uh, you know, it compared to an uh, Apple Watch. Yeah. Uh, you know, I would go to uh, on the way to work. Sometimes I'd stop at the gas station, uh, Wawa. And I would try and buy something like a breakfast or whatever. And I'd always use uh, Samsung Pay. And I bet that was a great experience. It wasn't because it, it was about, <laughs> God, it it would not work. Uh, sometimes it'd be like 50% success rate. Then I finally figured out that if I like wait a minute, like I double hit it, wait a few seconds to let it think and then touch it, it works most of the time. Um, my Apple Watch is like boop, boop, boop. And it works 100% of the time, dude. Uh, See what the problem with that is? You know, like, that's technology that you have to use in a hurry. It and is. And when so, technology you have to use it in a, in a hurry yeah. doesn't work, there's, and yeah. you're holding up people behind you, it pisses you just look me like off, a moron. Like, yeah, so there's, like, like there's two things that can happen. Either you go boop, 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 and you pay for it faster than anybody else, and you look awesome, or yeah. you're sitting there fucking with your watch, yeah. and you're looking yeah. like a dumbass, and, like, Come on there, and then you finally Kirk, pull out go. your fucking yeah. card, and then the old guy behind you is, like, rolling his eyes at this technology shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, yeah, you either look like a hero or like an idiot. So the the Galaxy Watch made me look like an idiot all the time. And yeah, my Apple Watch makes feeling, me look like it? a hero all the time. Uh, it's just like a big difference. So and, and, and also the watch faces and stuff, I just didn't appreciate as much. So not a bad watch other than that, really. So I'm really curious, though, if the Galaxy Watch 4 can turn it around, if they can make it an actual competitor to the Apple Watch. And you know you'll hear stuff from a lot of the big reviewers on it. I know Linus, we just got done talking about how he's a, a diehard Apple Watch fan because, and he agrees with us. Like, you know, Android just hasn't done it. Uh, they haven't done it. We'll see now with their partnership, uh, Samsung's partnership with Google. Can they do it? I'm interested to see. I'm interested to see too. So, you know, part of, part of what, what I like about my Apple Watch is it's not round. You know, yeah. like, so, and then, you know, I'm sure people are going to say, yeah, but old watches are round. Yeah, but that's because the design yeah. fits the form. It fits the yeah. function of the watch. It Clocks does. are circle. Yeah. Like, there's so no reason why a smart watch needs to be watches, circle. Yeah. They were, they yeah. had a reason they were circle. Yeah. And we embraced it, and that's kind of the way watches look. But it's not the way watches have to look. Uh, in oh, 2021, oh. they could be whatever shape we want it to be. The Apple Watch and kind of goes in between like it's not a full square rounded corners and they make a very appealing device for the form factor that uh would make sense right so can i tell you something that i like about the the, the watch for and samsung in general sure more than apple i can go over uh my friend's house or you know wherever i may be and i can take one charger yeah because i can charge my watch on the back of my phone well, my phone's plugged in. What a great feature. <sighs> great. You know, Fantastic, so dude. literally, you know, Imagine. Apple, this great ecosystem that you all want to be a part of. And it's so great. Come join us. I just charged my Apple TV remote last night in my bedroom. And you know yeah. what I have, I, I have plugged in on my nightstand? I have my <laughs> iPad, which is USB Type-C. I have my 12 Pro Max, yeah. which is MagSafe. Yeah. I have my Apple Watch charger, which is a special snowflake charger that works with nothing else. Right. And now I had to plug in a lightning cable to charge my Apple TV remote. Yeah. Granted, Every device granted, has a different charger. Yeah, I know. But at what, least, what, you know. What year is it? it? It's true. Apple's very, they, you know, uh, in Apple's defense, though. Uh, I will say that at least they offer rechargeable batteries in their remote. Ninety percent of smart boxes don't have a remote with rechargeable batteries. Wait, they do? No. Well, I'm, well, I'm saying like you oh, can charge oh, oh, the remote. Oh, like recharge in an the Apple. remote. I see like you know, I, I gotta bust yeah. out. You know, for the yeah. uh, Nvidia Shield, uh, my old Nvidia Shield, I had to bust out one of these. Freaking, uh, oh, you know, is, oh, is the dude. fucking uh, watch batteries, 2032. Yeah. You know, uh, in, in in the modern ones now, it's like double A's. Okay, cool. But like the old NVIDIA Shield remote was like one of these suckers. Okay, great. Weird. Weird. Um, you know, so at least they offer one, even though they have, oh, to charge it proprietary cable. Sorry. But I realistically. proprietary cable. Just make all of your special Snowflake devices yeah. use the same special Snowflake charger. No, nah, dude. Don't it's make USB -C me or plug in dude. four things. Yeah. It's, to charge my devices. It doesn't ridiculous. make sense. The fact that my uh, I can't use a regular Qi charger with the Apple Watch kind of sucks for me, but you got to use the Apple yeah, Watch. Bizarro. Bizarro it's like world. you got to yeah. use the Apple Watch charger. You can't use any other one. So yeah. that's the So worst. that's a big con of the Samsung Watch. Yeah, it is. Uh, big con. 
or, 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 or the, a big pro, a big pro, pro is you can yeah. charge it with whatever. Wait a minute. Wait, can can the Galaxy Watch 4 do blood pressure in everywhere but the USA? Uh, ooh, that's that would weird. be huge. It's a Did regulation the, thing. So yeah, but like the Apple Watch can't do it anywhere, right? So like for the uh-huh. for the health push you've seen from Apple. It's weird to see Samsung add ECG and blood pressure in the same watch. I don't know. That's a great point. That's a good... I don't know. Because, you know, they all these smart uh, phone makers, or, or smart watch makers, sorry, they're all trying to uh, bank on the fitness people. They have all the different smart fitness monitoring stuff they can get, and Samsung might have an edge there if they have uh, more metrics that they... <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, so uh, ECG that doesn't really seem that valu- valuable to me. Uh, yeah. Probably valuable to some people out there, but my personal experience, I've seen more people with blood pressure issues than with a heart arrhythmia. Okay. You know, so like again, your mileage may vary. You know, someone may say like, "Oh, but my mom has an arrhythmia or whatever." You, you know, and I get that, and I respect that. But it just seems like 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 nearly everyone probably has blood pressure that's not in in, a, in an ideal range. You know, I probably I am not in, a, in an ideal range. We live in America where every yeah. food, uh, yeah. all the food that you can buy has like way too much sugar in it, you know, and all this other crap. So fast food, yeah, blood pressure is probably 99% more valuable for most Americans. Yeah, like that. yeah. Like um, I'm, I'm not discounting the ECG because I'm sure that there are people out there who would may have saved their lives yeah. or you know it's crazy valuable, but I think blood pressure is a bigger step. You know, I yeah. think it's a larger. And, and again, I know David to back it up, but yeah. I just have the small sample set of people I know. But I think yeah. blood pressure is going to be a big deal when, if and when it comes to the U.S. and it's on right. Samsung and Apple watches. So we're kind of over on time when it comes to the Galaxy Unpacked event, but I think we've covered That's it. That's part for the course for us. We've covered so. it pretty well. I think I'm pretty much ready to wrap up with that. Let's uh, let's move on to a uh, controversial uh, topic, potential, uh, which is Apple. And uh, they're uh, coming under fire recently for some of the privacy things uh, – that they're going to be doing. So just for the uh, viewers and listeners, if you're not up to speed on the uh, tech news regarding what Apple is doing, uh, Apple are changing uh, the way uh, basically to combat uh, CSAM is what they call it, I think, which is really just child abusive imagery and uh, child pornography, things of that nature. Uh, what they, What they intend to do is scan photos prior to uploading to iCloud for this type of imagery. And uh, when they detect it, they'll report it to the, uh, well, they'll review it first off, and then they'll report it to uh, whatever child, uh, I guess, uh, organization that's relevant to that is. I forget what the name is. So interesting, interesting. So do you have uh, anything to add before I go on? I do. You know, it's kind of, I get it, right? Like, it's a noble cause. It's a good cause. No one wants those images on their network. No one wants that stuff to be found on, on ideally anyone's phone or, or, right. or, 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 or online storage, you know, but there comes a line where I think, you know, it kind of turns down to what, what, what other use cases could this, you know, this, this algorithm benefit, you know? Right. And when you actually boil down to what would trigger a false positive, I forget what uh, website I read it on, but it said that yeah. like there could be one in 1,000 iPhone users may have a false positive. That sounds so, way too way too many. It does. Uh, I, so, I don't think that's true. So, uh, what I mean, you can pull something up if you want, but like yeah. here's what I think. Um, you know, regarding the technology they're using to scan, uh, I don't know exactly what hashing algorithm is involved. Uh, but depending on what it is, that would uh, increase or decrease the probability oh, of collisions. Okay, okay. So, so for some clarification, it's one in one thousand for a false positive, uh, meaning it finds a hash that it deems um, malicious. Right. But um, it, it's one in one trillion for it to be actually become an issue for the user, right? Yeah, so, so be, be, because like they kind of factored in that it's not going to be a perfect system. So okay. There may be a false positive on like a hash, you know. Yeah. Uh, but even so, if you're if you're that one in one trillion user, right? Ooh, 
which so, is probably not going to happen. Let me pull something up here and, and go over it a little bit more in detail. Uh, not too much because we don't want to get too wordy, but let's just say Apple did put out this uh, this uh, frequently asked questions page uh, where they go over some of the things. And obviously this is, you know, bias. Apple wrote this. But they try and be transparent about what's happening. So they say, you know, blah, blah. They kind of talk about themselves here. Child sexual abuse material. See Sam. They want to, you know, find CSAM and detect it, right? So th basically the idea is they're going to scan uh, once uh, it, a user that uses iCloud maybe want to upload photos to it. Uh, that's when that will, that will be the trigger. So it will initiate this scan when you go and upload to iCloud. So for clarification, if a user just turns off iCloud, then he's safe. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> with the, Weird. this is what I want to say. This is the current implementation. Okay. Anything they implement now is subject to change. They could do, right. they could change. Right. This is why it's a little bit of a gray area. It's like, how far do we want to allow Apple to go with this? With their current implementation, you might be okay with it. Uh, you might even encourage it. But if they decide we're going to change the rules, uh, we're going to scan for more things other than CSAM. We're going to uh, scan in other ways, more things other than photos. And we're going to look for other things. We don't know. They're creating a framework to do this sort of thing. And we don't know what they'll use it for. We just know what they intend to start using it uh, for. So let That's me just point. go over this That's real a really quick. That's really good point, yeah. Um, so... They're going to scan, if you're an iCloud subscriber and you upload photos, that will be the trigger. They'll scan on device, okay? This doesn't happen in the cloud. They don't scan it in the cloud. They scan it on your device. Once the, and the way they scan it, just to talk about the technology, is these organizations publish uh, a list of hash, uh, of hashes, right? A hash is sort of an identifying serial number almost like a string horrifying. of characters right? a string of characters that basically everything on the internet all data you can run it through a hashing algorithm it spits out a unique identifier that uh will basically uh be tied to that thing that file uh the way you see it used a lot is with um uh what do you call it um uh like crc checks or something uh where uh, you'll download a file, they'll give you the uh, the hash, and you'll run it through a uh, MD5 hash is what it is, sorry. MD5. Uh, and you'll run it through, if it matches what they give you, then you know the file it hasn't been tampered with, right? It's the same sort of technology. It's a hash algorithm. They uh, There's a list of hashes, known CSAM photos, okay, that they'll put on your device. Your device is going to scan your photos for any matches, okay? Once a match is detected, that's when it'll go to Apple for verification. Apple will look at it, is this CSAM? And then if it is, if it's confirmed, yes, it is one of those hash images as per the hash identifier, and then uh, they'll review it for false positive. Once it's confirmed, then they can uh, report it to the proper authorities. And I don't think it's the police, it's actually a child protection sort of organization. So with that being said, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how I feel about this. I think personally, when I first heard about it, I'm like, okay, well, I wouldn't want child uh, CSAM uh, on my servers either. Uh, that, you know, right, that makes right. sense. But there's an invasion of privacy taking place when they, when Apple, uh, you know, runs scans on your data. Uh, you know, I'm a huge privacy advocate. I think that you would agree. Uh, you know, I obviously, oh, for sure. For sure. and you know, we both work a little bit in cybersecurity uh, on the in the commercial sector, right? Um, so we both are well aware of these technologies and what they may or may not be capable of. Um, I know I'm concerned about them pushing this further. I'm concerned about what they could do if they. Uh, if governments across the world force them to use this technology to look, um, you know, for other, items. for other items, right? Like the United States, you know, we're protected uh, a little bit by the Constitution and other laws that prevent these organizations from going too far in more, uh, uh, I, I guess, uh, 
authoritative countries or whatever. Uh, You're right. You know, right. It might not be the case, like China, I don't know, uh, being probably the one most people point to uh, as being a potential. Now, what I will say, though, is they cover that in their uh, their fact here. Um, uh, hold on, let me pull it up. Um, I saw the part where it said, "Can can, can Apple uh, can can they force uh, governments uh, force Apple to add images uh, not related to CSAM?" They said Apple refusing such demands. That's pretty huge. Yeah, that's, so, a, that's a good that's a, that's a good section right there. Yeah. So here's the thing: uh, they're claiming, and here's the they're saying we won't do it. Now that doesn't mean jack to me. Okay. Okay. I really don't think so. I I I uh, listened to a video. Uh, that was uh, pretty fascinating. They talked about uh, Apple's relationship in China and what they've done with the Chinese uh, thus far. They China kind of has, uh, for lack of a better term, Apple by the balls because you know a lot of the manufacturing that happens on Apple products is within China, and right. obviously you know the right. Chinese government has complete control over what's going on there. If you know, Apple is very afraid to tarnish their relations. Uh, relations with China and the Chinese government. So it would be likely that Apple would comply with whatever the government asked of them, right? So if – even though they claim – and, you know, obviously that's a pretty safe claim to be making inside the United States, right? Like they've – you know, we've had other three-letter agencies try and bully Apple into – uh, you know, getting stuff, uh, you know, uh, like unlocking phones, and they've said no. Well, actually, I, th I, th I think it's iOS 7 and earlier. They just can't be patched anymore, right? So like yeah. if your phone runs iOS 7 and earlier, they can get into that phone without, any without anyone's help. Right. Essentially. So, I mean, I know when this came out the other day, uh, you had – you kind of uh, freaked out a little bit, dude. So, so go over that, dude. Like, what's your feeling on this? Let's just, uh... yeah. yeah. So, you know, as someone who who values privacy, you know, yeah. as someone who who you know, one of one of my 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 soapbox feels for for why I use Apple is is they actually maybe somewhat care about my privacy more than the alternative. You know, I, yep. I I'm not going to sit here and say that it's 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 as secure as self hosted stuff. But I will sit here and say that it's probably better than the alternative. Uh, it's it's frustrating to me to watch Apple, you know, speak with every keynote. And now they have that little neat you know, Apple privacy logo where, like, the leaf on the Apple turns into a lock and, like, it locks your privacy in. Yet they come out and say, every single photo you take, we're going to scan the hash on it. Every single image. And, and And that's weird to me, you know? So, like... My mind is instantly thinking, okay, well, are they now going to take a database of the photos that I have? Uh, like, let's say I take a selfie, man. Okay, let's say, let's say I take yeah. a selfie, and now Apple knows where that hash is. So yeah. then I go and I post that photo on LinkedIn, I post that photo on Facebook, I post that photo elsewhere on the internet. Right. Are they now going to have a database of where my personal photos are stored? I don't know. I can't answer that. No one can answer that. Can you, right. can you, well, we don't you know, know in what ways they could use this technology. Uh, I mean, right. And, and, like, and that's the scary part, guys. Right. right. Like, like the scary part is, is we know the tool exists. So now we don't know how they will use it in the future or without telling us. And, yeah. you know, like that's, that's, that's the same thing as like, uh, 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 you know, like a, like a gun, right? Like, like, like I kind of, you know, compare it to a gun. Like, like does, does, does a gun have good merit? Yes, it is possible for a gun to have good merit. Is it possible to use a gun maliciously? Yes, it is possible to use a gun maliciously. You know, when you view it in, in, in simpler terms like that, I think it's a really good a good analogy to explain to people who may not really, you know, be as as, as technical as some of you. Yeah. Uh, but now that you know the tool exists, it can be used yeah. either, you know, wrongly or rightly. Yeah. And the scary part is is we may never know. So let me um, just say something interesting. Craig Federici from Apple, right? We Air all love, Force One. We love him. Air Force One. We love <laughs> Craig. Uh, such a cool guy. All right. Yeah. The thing cool about is Craig that? is there was a uh, it was an interesting interview that somebody had posted on Reddit. Uh, it was probably from the Apple subreddit or something, and it was interesting because Craig said, "Your device knowing about you, what you're doing, is fine." 
the cloud, some guy in the cloud knowing what you're doing is creepy. All right. And then there was applause, right? Like people fucking agree. And this was really, yeah. you know, a discussion yeah. about, you know, Apple's policy with, you know, yeah, we well, care about privacy. To, we care about this stuff. To that point, I don't want to cut you off because I think you're on a good tangent. But to that point, you know, that's a big deal as to why Siri did all their did all their voice processing on device. Yeah. Now, you may have some people say, oh, well, you know, Google Assistant is faster and better. Yeah, but it doesn't it didn't do it on device then. You know what right. I mean? So like it was a trade off. So it was. So it's a privacy trade off, right? And so Apple's typically made the privacy choice, uh, you know, 90% of the time. And honestly, that's why they're probably scanning on device and not just in iCloud, right? I uh, mean, knowing what I know, it, it would be a lot easier to do this on iCloud. It'd be way easier to do it on iCloud. Now, I know that they claim, you know, encryption and all these things. Apple has the keys. You know, if somebody su subpoenaed Apple for, like, certain uh, – data they've been they've complied with government agencies for yeah. uh you know criminal activity and stuff like they'll give that stuff out but you know with that being said they could definitely scan uh iCloud itself they try and keep it on device unless something uh they find something they're not actually going to know anything about it so people talk about false positives i really think the likelihood of a collision which is uh two files having the same exact hash Super, depending on the hashing algorithm, uh, super unlikely. I don't see that ever happening. I'd say for most people, this is a non-issue. This isn't something to worry about, at least on its face. Now, if you talk about the slippery slope and you get into, well, they could do it. They could change it. They could make, they could change the rules, you know, like, um, like Darth Vader, you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> Pray I don't alter it any further. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, and, and and this is really just we don't know. And uh, I think a lot of people are like, no, that's crossing the line. Uh, even Apple people are saying this is crossing the line. They don't want their uh, device to be scanned. No, you know, people don't have things to hide, but they privacy is kind of uh, a right that people want to keep. And we've had to fight for it more and more as uh, you know, technology and these big corporations have been really uh, you know, taking our data, selling it, you know, capturing it, look at what Facebook is doing and all these other big players, you know, uh, telemetry and all these things. Like there's a lot of business in knowing your customers and what they're doing and you can sell that. And Apple's historically made good choices, but this one is just kind of backwards. And uh even though it's saying, oh, well, it's for CSAM, it's for child abuse, it's, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people are like, well, skept we're skeptical because you say that, but is it really? Where's the profit to be made here? You know, Apple isn't a trillion dollar company or whatever just because, you know, they're, they're not, you know, they're thinking about profits somewhere, right? Like they got to be. They're big. This is capitalism, right? So like, where do yeah. they stand to gain from this? Uh, you know, you're not you're not gonna like save the children just because you feel like it. Um, so I don't know what the play is by Apple, but it's definitely concerning. Uh, what about you, dude? Like, are you actually concerned? No. Okay. So uh, after everything that like, because initially you were like, dude, fuck this. Like, I'm going back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... I'm more concerned about Apple's stance and backpedaling as a company yeah. than the actual repercussions that, that I would personally face from this change. Right. You know, at the end of the day, I'm not doing anything illegal. You know, you're not doing anything illegal. Uh, it just comes down to peace of mind to know yeah. that in a world where everything we do is online, essentially, it's nice to have that, that safe space, you know, yeah. that peace of mind that, Hey, you know, there are parts of my life that no eyes are on. There are parts of my life that are private. And it seems like every day I wake up, we're one step farther away yeah, from exactly. me having a place to myself. No, that's perfectly reasonable. I mean, a lot of people don't think that way. I think that, you know, for the most part, we care about this. We might be even in the minority as a result. But, you know, I know that this is why I self-host a lot of my platforms because, there is no guarantee. Like anytime you interact online, there's no guarantee that what you're doing isn't captured and used uh, in some way. You know, if you upload to Google Drive, you know, you're trusting right. 
Google not to play with your data. If you upload to iCloud, it's the same thing. And it's really just, you know, we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen uh, with with Apple. We don't know if they're going to do anything malicious. They might not. So it's really up in the air. We just we just don't know. And I think a good way to look at it too is uh, to your point of not knowing. Yeah. You know, we know what's possible or could be possible with the tools. You yeah. know, so so the fact that the tool exists is scary enough. Yeah. So. Yeah, we can pretty much close this topic. I mean, that's kind of the end of it. Uh, I think that I they might even roll back this change with the backlash, uh, and that's really what I'm hoping. I hope that they kind of reevaluate this. Uh, I don't think they will. They might, but uh, if they do, great. I don't think they will either. Uh, if they don't, then uh, I hope that they do a lot to uh, to to really reassure people that this is not gonna. To, to, to um, impact anything uh, yeah. negatively. And they're going to have eyes on them, you yeah. know, security experts. I know I'm personally going to have their eyes on them. I, I want to see what happens with this. And uh, I mean, if they go any further with it, I mean, simple as that, we'll just drop. Yeah. It. And, and like, it's kind you of know? bizarre to me anyway, to, cause like, cause to like your point, you're like, what do they have to gain? Number one. Yeah. And, and number two, if you're like this big CP mogul, right? Like who's mm-hmm. like, Oh, check out my iCloud photos. Dude. Yeah, like, I know. Let me share the album. Like, I don't fucking know. Like, no, I don't see it happening. Like, I guess, but no, 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 no. I, I think that the, if you're going to do something malicious, why would you do it on iCloud? Right. First off, right. Uh, there right. are better platforms that are more anonymous than fucking iCloud. Get out of here. Um, but, you know, that's why I think it's kind of a bullshit excuse uh, to, to point to see Sam and stuff like it's a problem. But maybe it is, dude. I don't know what's happening on the back yeah. end with iCloud. Yeah. I you mean, know, there only are a Apple lot of people does. who are not you know, who, who probably think it is secure. You know, I want to know what the trigger for this was. Was there internal discussions? Like, you yeah, know, I don't like know. What brought this, what, what brought this out? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they found it and, and they were like, and, and, you know, one guy know? said something interesting. They were like, maybe this is just a fear scare tactic to prevent people from uh, using uh, iCloud and, and iPhone and all these Apple services in that way. It might be just oh. a scare tactic. It's not like it's a problem. They want to prevent it from becoming a problem that might be this might be a, uh, a sure, preventative sure. measure against that's that a, sort of activity that's an interesting way to look at it i like yeah. that take yeah so like take. uh yeah let's move on dude like that's really the big topics now we can move on to either uh what we're playing today or do we have anything to rant about i mean my rant is is me canceling my z folds so you've ranted uh so i got something to talk about one of the do reasons it. i'm I, I wanted to go back to Apple so much was uh, HomeKit. So oh, yeah, yeah. Let's here's let's, the let's thing, this. Uh, and and I'll try to limit this to like ten minutes. Uh, HomeKit is a uh, Apple's sort of smart home brain. Okay, uh, where if you have smart lights, smart locks, uh, other smart devices, it could be anything from a ceiling fan to uh, you know what about what, smart asses? Does it control them too? Uh, oh yeah, dude. Anything, Sweet. actually. You can control <laughs> anything with HomeKit. There's HomeKit compatible products. You can do uh, some non-compatible products with HomeKit also. There's uh, there's something I, I run called HomeBridge, which, which really? lets me use sort of uh, originally non-native HomeKit stuff with HomeKit. So I wanted to do HomeKit because, you know, I, I really love smart home stuff. I've always think they were fascinating. And... Uh, You know, here's the thing about smart homes is like, I think having smart lights is awesome. You know, I used to use uh, Amazon Echo devices, which, you know, I'm not going to say it, uh, the A word, but you know, uh, Amazon uh, Alexa. Alexis. 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 Um, So my 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 girlfriend's dad got an Amazon, uh, the the A word. And yeah, the A word. He he, he always shouts, Alexis. And he goes, it's not working. (laughs) It's not working. Yeah. (laughs) So we used to use Amazon um, and we also used a Z wave, which was the wireless protocol technology in our house. So what I did was in our old house, we had Z wave light switches, uh, and we had Z wave products. That's the wireless protocol. Each Z wave Z wave device is kind of a, a repeater for other Z wave devices. So the more you install, the more your network has great coverage. So we replaced a lot is of Is that what Philips Hue uses? Cause that works the same way. Where I like think Hue uses every bulb is a repeater. 
Yeah, okay, well, I thought some Hue stuff is, uh, the older stuff is, I think, maybe Wi-Fi. I don't know, okay. but ZigBee is another protocol. Uh, Hue might use ZigBee. I have to look into that. But there's competing standards. So there's the ZigBee, there's um, uh, Z-Wave, and I was looking at all of the pros and cons of these. There's also just straight wireless uh, or Wi-Fi smart mm -hmm. devices, right? But the problem with those is oftentimes they clog up your 2.4 gigahertz band or your 5 gigahertz band, depending on the device. Um, and you might not want a ton of Wi-Fi devices uh, messing with your Wi-Fi. Uh, in addition, there's uh, new technologies. Like okay. uh, there's Thread, which is a brand new one uh, that a lot of devices are kind of going towards. It's like the evolution. What it What's the advantage of a thread device versus it, the it works or a very much like Z Wave from the way I see it, where the thread devices are sort of uh, all repeaters uh, in the sense that they can they spread the thread network and make it um, function better okay. the more you have. And uh, thread also advertises very fast response times. So like when I would interact with a Z Wave device, sometimes there's like that delay. I noticed uh, that too. Yeah. Thread sort of uh, alleviates that problem by being very quick theoretically. Uh, and I and thread I don't think is really uh, it's not really ready for prime time. But I, you know I have a couple thread devices. They when they work they work really fast. Uh, like I hit the button in HomeKit and instant response. So based on all these technologies, in my old smart home, I went with a uh, – it's called a Vera Light Smart Hub, and then it interfaces with my Z-Wave devices, which I paired to that hub. And then I had a kind of bad experience. The Vera was a very bad product. Uh, and, and what did that control? Sorry? It was, it was the Z-Wave Hub. Okay. So okay. the Z-Wave Hub controlled all these devices. This is where I'm getting to is I had a bad experience – uh, when I bought the Vera light, it didn't interface with Amazon. I had to do a hacky plugin, which added it. Then they finally added it natively. And it was like, okay. And it finally works, but, uh, it was kind of jank. I had issues with the actual receptacles that, uh, or, or sorry, the light switches that were Z-Wave light switches. Interesting. Uh, the, the, it was just a lot of problems I had. But like top down, the entire system was just not It just not wasn't ideal. working uh, in some, it, it had reliability issues. It was just kind of garbage. And I've been looking for a better solution ever since. And there was no really good phone, like the Vera app was basically one of those web wrappers that you were talking about. It was kind of garbage. Uh, at controlling uh, my Z-Wave stuff, and it was very slow to launch. And so I ended up just using voice controls to, like, turn off all lights and do cool stuff like that. So that was really how I utilized it. Uh, and we recently moved, and I was like, I'm going to upgrade to the next big thing. HomeKit, turns out, is actually pretty damn good. Okay. So there's other things like Samsung Smart Things, and uh, there's new Veras and everything. HomeKit, I watched a lot of videos that showcased it, and I was super impressed. Well, so, you're a Smart Things boy now, dude, with that default <laughs> three coming. Yeah, so. I know. Well, I have Smart Things on this uh, phone as well because, uh, you know, I actually do have a kind of a proprietary Smart Things device, and that's my refrigerator. So. When it comes to smart home stuff, one of the things I bought was the uh, smart fridge, the Samsung one. Yeah, and, uh, he found a need to put a television in his in his fridge, or you know, I did uh, put a fridge um, in his television. Which, so you know, I wanted you want to, to see it. at any moment what's in my refrigerator. So you can see I got some Tostitos, oh, dude. dude. dude Tostitos. Uh, you know, I got some half a ketchup thing, some sweet tea. Um, Wait, did you just say ketchup? Uh, ketchup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You There's mean ketchup? Catch catch up, dude. Uh, yeah, catch, catch up, whatever. Up. Yeah. So, can you see <laughs> so, in the freezer too? Or uh, just no, the you fridge? can't. Because that's so, pretty cool. So oh, just dude, what, the what, what if I want to know what, what kind of meats I have? Sorry, for dude. Like you just can't. You just can't. Okay. you got to know Tech the meat. Up. So By the they need a, They do need a. Yeah, dude. Screw this fridge. Dude. I'm getting a new one with uh, better cameras, uh, freezer cams. So anyway, I, I was just like, oh, it's cool. <laughs> yeah. It cool. So, um, I mean, not wrong, but. But to go back to the – I don't like smart things, by the way. I think it's like basically a ripoff of uh, HomeKit. So HomeKit, Snazzy Lab, shout out to that guy because his HomeKit overview in his house sold me. Okay. Um, he bought the uh, Lutron Caseta lights, uh, which, uh, you know, there's light switches that go on the wall. I have them in this room. I have them all over the house. We actually just installed like uh, 15 different light switches last weekend, and uh, – 
or, or maybe it was two weekends ago now, shoot. But we installed them, and they're fantastic. Like, the Lutron Caseta light switches work instantly and reliably. They're, um, it's all HomeKit compatible, so it's all, like, built in. Super nice. Okay. So okay. all my lights are smart and controlled now uh, for the most part. There's a couple that we didn't get because uh, they're not cheap. They're, like, $30, $60 a switch. Um, oh, wow. But, you know, when you're doing a house... A, a whole house, it probably whole, adds up. It does, yeah. but, like, if you're investing in a new house, uh, to me, it was an investment. It's a long-term sure. investment uh, to, to, to smartify my house in the beginning uh, and just kind of have it done. Uh, so, really happy. And I also have smart shades. Like, There's actually the window behind you is a smart shade. And mm-hmm. I have a window here that's giving me some awesome natural lighting that's also has a smart so, shade. <laughs> Can you control the shade right now? Do you want me to do it with the app or voice control? Oh, do voice, dude. So I'll be like, shut Eric room shades. Okay. The Eric's room shades are closed. Did you hear that over Bluetooth? Oh, dude. Yeah, that's awesome. So it's shutting them now. And I How get, cool is that? Yeah. So your my lighting is so, going to change, but yeah. Give me some uh, context. Like, 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 like how much did, did that shade run you back? So I, you know what's crazy? I didn't have to pay for the shade. The, really? The, it came with the house. Do you, do you know how much that shade would cost? Uh, I think they're pricey, dude. I have these shades in my bedroom also. They're amazing. They're the Lutron uh, Smart Shades. Does it plug uh, into the wall? Does it work? No, they don't. They have a bunch of D-cell batteries in them, like freaking like eight uh, really? or ten yeah, they're they're insane. <laughs> There's like a lot. They last a theoretical year. Um, I'm gonna open Arena the shades, shades now. by Lutron. There they are. Create your comfort zone. Open Eric's room shades. Okay, the Eric's room shades are open. Yeah, and you can also do like halfway, fifty percent, wow. whatever. So I love the smart shit. I think it's the coolest thing ever. Um, in addition to that, uh, I have smart locks and stuff. So like my front door lock and stuff. I get notifications when my door's unlocked and locked. I also have, uh, I, I, I fell in love with the, uh, uh, their networking equipment. What is it? The Ubiquity Unify products. Okay. They have uh, cameras and stuff. They work with HomeKit if you have use HomeBridge. So it's really cool. Like on your Apple TV, if you have a HomeKit compatible camera and somebody rings my doorbell, like if I have the Apple TV on, It'll pop up in the corner like someone is at your door, and you can so, like talk back to them through the Apple TV. So does um, the Ubiquity cameras are compatible with HomeKit? They're not. Okay. But with the Smart Bridge, um, they are. They are. So it's kind of and like it'll a, have a, the, the pop up functionality. It does. So the uh, there's a community plugins for a lot of different uh, products that are not HomeKit native to and, add that function. So and, it's, and you have it running. Yeah, I do. So it runs in the, cool. on one of my servers, just chilling. It's very low power. Now here's the question um, for you: Can you disable that? Like, if you're having like a full on theater mode and you don't want any distractions, can you can you just, silence it? Uh oh, what my cameras? What are you talking about? Silence. What? Well, well, like, like you said, like it'll pop up in the corner if someone's at your door. Yeah, so that's a good question. I actually don't know. Maybe you could go into a silent mode or something like that. That's a great question. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, How would I'm like you do super it? OCD about like movie yeah. watching experience. So like that would be something I would not want to happen. Wouldn't it be sick if like on your watch you could go into theater mode and then it would like it, automatically? Yeah, dude, that, that, that would be the, yeah. the integration of a lifetime. Yeah. But anyway, I just wanted to say like HomeKit's been a, a real pleasure. Um, it's super cool. It's, it's way better. I think smart home stuff in 2021 is kind of in a great spot. I think huh? that, uh, you know, I, I love the way airplay two works and everything like that with uh multi zone. It's the best multi zone solution out there in my opinion, sure. um, uh, that I've used anyway, there might be better ones. And, uh, but yeah, I'm really digging home kit and all the smart home stuff. It, it's just the coolest thing ever. So that's awesome, man. I'm glad you found something you like. I mean, I, I would like yeah. to set it up to that level. I just don't have that many devices yeah. yet, right? Like I have yeah, I have I Apple know. TV, home uh uh home pods yeah. and uh Q yeah. lights. It's cool. It, it even my TVs are in HomeKit, so I could be like 
turn off all TVs really? and it'll so, literally turn off or on so, all my TVs. So hold on. Can I do that with my C10 or no? You can. Oh, the C10 wow. can go into home kit and you can turn off. You can actually manage your C10 with your phone. Like, uh, in a home kit, like your inputs, all kinds of stuff. All right. This is, it's this is stupid. pretty awesome. My smart vacuum is in home kit. My Tesla Offline, is in home have, kit. Uh, you're going to have to, uh, yeah. tell me how to add my television yeah. and car to this. It's neat. Like your Tesla can be in home kit and you can do stuff like, uh, you know, open your garage doors and home link and do all kinds of shit. Oh, like it's stupid. Great. It's this just cool. Great. I just love it. Uh, I love smart home stuff. If you ever have any questions, hit me up. But uh, I will, man. That was my that was my blurb, dude. Do you want to move on? <laughs> we're yeah, at time, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're good. You, you know, I've been playing the same stuff. So. Yeah, I haven't really. I've been playing Factorio, so yeah, that, I could talk about boy. that forever. But you know, Factorio is <laughs> like we, I've been playing that for like the past couple months. Actually, I think our current save is over eighty six hours. Wow. Of uh, just on our current save. So, yeah, it's kind of nutty. And it took me, like, 80 hours to beat Dragon Quest Eleven. Did you beat that, by the way? I did. I did have 119 hours on my save file. Nice. Nice, dude. Was it... What were you playing it on? PC? Uh, Xbox. Uh, were you playing it on the iPad? Like, uh, like the cloud thing? Like, uh, mm. streaming at all? I, I did. I did. Nice. Uh, XCloud, uh, no. That's to say, like, I, I, I didn't play it there primarily as my main choice but like right. if i was somewhere where my xbox wasn't i would boot it up on xcloud and i mainly yeah. just like farmed levels on that like the input latency is still not anything i would recommend yeah okay uh, but it's not if really you an input sensitive go on, game yeah. right right like exactly yeah. if you have some time to kill and you just want to play a non-input sensitive game it's great for that yeah. works well all right, I guess that's it for the podcast, right? That's All it. Right, yeah. Any last bullets, dude? Yeah. I think we covered everything that was on my agenda. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, thanks for coming uh, to yep. the Technostatic Podcast today. This is episode two. And, uh, uh, you know, you can catch us on a lot of platforms now. We're not just on YouTube, we're on Spotify, uh, uh, Apple Podcasts, um, Amazon Music. Who listens to that? I'll, I'll be interested to know. And then, uh, yeah, I have a buddy who subscribes to Amazon Music because okay. it was two dollars cheaper, yeah, yeah than yeah. Apple Music and Spotify. Yeah, you can listen to us on <laughs> Audible apparently as well. Uh, there you go. So yeah, and we're gonna be on the Google uh, podcast as well. It's just taking Google forever to review our stuff, and uh, yeah. So if you wanna, um, you know, you wanna catch us anywhere, go to technostatic.com. You can see exactly where we're at. I'll have links to all of us, uh, all of our. I guess where where you can find us and if you have any suggestions for the podcast hit us up and uh you can catch our emails on our website as well so yeah thanks for coming for the to the podcast and we'll see you next week see you guys